In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run your Kubernetes cluster locally. And you get a cool dashboard as well, but we're going to be doing most of it on the command line, but it's nice to have that overall visualization with the dashboard. You do need to have Docker installed, and it'd be great to use kubectl command line, and we'll be using Minikube to run this locally. So the way I've done this in the past for my live streams and videos, I've been hosting the Eddy Hub Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean, and it's about $10 a month, it's really good. But when I wanted to test things out, I kept on having committing it to GitHub, get GitHub actions to run, deploy it out to the Kubernetes cluster, and maybe something would go wrong and I have to kind of repeat, rinse and repeat, and maybe I'd break the cluster, which might have happened once or twice. And I bring down all the Eddy Hub apps, Eddybot, Linkfree, Finder, and some others. So I wanted to be able to test this locally and iterate on it really fast. And you can do it, and it's actually really quite straightforward. So I really want to show you how you can do this with just a few commands. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. So let me quickly show you what our Linkfree project is. It's an open source alternative to Linktree. And we have a Kubernetes folder here, and we have three files. So you've got the service, the ingress, and the deployment. And they're all quite simple YAML files, so let me show you. So the service itself is showing what app we want to deploy and what what port it's going to run on. And then ingress is going to show us where we're going to route this through to and what domains we're going to tie it to. So in this case, we are tied to linkfree.eddyhub.org and we're going, to, we're going to match those together as well as .io and it's going to go through to port 5000. And we're going to be matching that on the forward slash. There's no path after that. And the deployment YAML file is going to describe how to deploy our app. In this case, we want two replicas. And we can make some changes in this video and see it scale up and scale down. And if we do a different deployment, how it deploys accordingly. And Kubernetes does all that magic for us, which is super awesome. The orchestration that it does and handles is great. And it also shows which image to pull. And we're going to pull the latest one. We're not going to pull a fixed number at the moment. So we've got those three files, but with one command, we can get Kubernetes to work its magic and just run all of it for us. Let's try it. So I've cloned the project and I've got this locally and I'm in the directory that you saw the root of the project on GitHub. So you can see we've got the Kubernetes folder. So the first thing we need to do is start Minikube and to install it is just a curl command. You can install it in other ways, depending on your operating system. So have a look at the Minikube instructions. It is literally like one line to do it. So let's do Minikube start. So let's start up our Minikube. Now Minikube is running, let's run our Minikube dashboard and let's have a look at what we've got. We probably haven't got very much because we haven't deployed anything yet, but you'll see in just a moment that we're going to deploy something and how straightforward it is. So as you can see, we've got nothing running on our dashboard. We have nothing to display, no deployments, no services, and so forth. So let's deploy something. So as I mentioned, we're in the root of the Linkfree project. You can do this for any project that has Kubernetes set up for it with the YAML config. And we can run kube ctl. And if actually, if we want to verify what we saw on the dashboard, we could say uh, get, get deployments or get deploys. Doesn't have any resources. Deploys. Uh, get pods, there's nothing. Get services. So again, the dashboard is showing correct, which we expect. Let's deploy something. So we could do kubectl, which is the command you would use for interacting with your actual Kubernetes cluster on the server or locally. It's exactly the same. So you get to practice all the commands. We could say apply and we'll pass it the folder Kubernetes. And now you can see it has run our deployment, our ingress and our services, and Kubernetes will manage the order that needs to be done in and tie it all together. So now if we go to the dashboard, we can see straight away, we've got one deployment, we've got two pods running, because in our YAML config, we did have two pods, and we've got one replica set. And that's happened, and that's happened like instantly, that's how fast it is. So what happens if we want to make a change? So let's have a look. So if I go into the Kubernetes folder and we go to deployments, let's just say I change the replica from two to four, hit save, I run the, the reapply again. Most of them remain unchanged as it has noticed, but one has had a change. So now if we go over to here, you can see it's got four pods running and now it's scaled up to four containers, four pods running as well. So that's looking pretty good. So we can dive in, go to the deployments and you can do all this via the command line. You can go into a particular pod. You can kind of see the, the history of it. You can go in and see the logs and so forth. Well, that's great and all, but we actually want to see the app. We want to see the app working and make sure we can interact with it and so forth. So let's do that. So the next thing we want to do is bring up our terminal and we want to run kubectl. 
And then we want to port forward to the uh, deployment. So we say port forward and it will be the service and it'll be the name of our service, which in this case, we can go to services. In this case, it's edihub hyphen link free hyphen service. So edihub hyphen link free hyphen service. And then we want to specify what port. So we'll hit it on port 7000, let's say, but we know from our config, we were running it on port 5000. So this will map it from externally 7000, which will hit in our browser to internally 5000. So hit enter, it's now doing the port forwarding. So if we go to localhost 7000, you can see this is the app running. So we're running the latest version, 0.68.3. And if we actually go to the, the project, that should be the latest release as well. Exactly. So we did say latest in our config, and that's the latest one. So this is actually the deployed version that's deployed in the cloud for everyone in the world to use, but we're using it locally. So we can then make changes. So the deployed version will be running on two pods because that's what was in the config. That's what was committed to, to GitHub. But locally, we're running on four because we're having a play. Yes, you can play with much more interesting config than that, but it's definitely worth having a play locally and get used to the commands and get used to seeing how it, it works in the clouds before you do anything to your real world apps. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I found Minikube awesome. I'm really, really excited to continue using and playing with it. Let me know in the comments below if you've used it before or if you use something else and what you've used it for, if you have used it before. That's a lot of used it before. Anyway, enough from me. I look forward to chatting to you in the Eddie Hub Discord between live streams and videos. I'll see you there, link in the description below.